This is Jared from Commit to Quality. And in this video, we're going to go over the testing principles. These are crucial for any tester to understand what the core foundation of testing is made up of. So there are seven principles of software testing that you really need to know. I think by following these principles, software testing can be made more effective and efficient resulting in higher quality software that meets users needs and expectations. So you can see the seven here, but we're going to go through them one by one. First of all, testing shows the presence of defects. The primary purpose of testing is to identify defects or errors in the software. If defects are found, they can be corrected and retested to ensure the software meets the expected quality standards. There's not much more to add to that apart from we showing you that there are defects in the code when testing. Second, exhaustive testing is impossible. So it's not possible to test every possible input or scenario for a software program, as the number of combinations to this could be infinite. Therefore, testing efforts should be focused on high risk areas and scenarios, as well as critical functionalities. You need to ask questions, read documentation, focus your efforts on the most important parts of the software, and then cover these first. There's no piece of software in the world that is bug free. Third is early testing. The sooner you catch bugs or identify issues, the less costly it is. So so I've got a chart up here at the moment, which is showing if you catch them from right to the beginning of the requirements, you've got the cost associated with it. But then when you get into the development of coding phase, it goes up five times and then it's going up 10 times integration. By the time you've got to your system and acceptance test and it's gone up 15 times and in production is of course is the end goal. It's hit the maximum amount of cost. What it's trying to say is testing needs to be started as early as possible in your development life cycle. This is to catch defects early and reduce the cost of fixing them later on down the process. The best way to show this, like I say, is the graph on the screen. The earlier in the life cycle, the easier and less costly it is to fix a bug. Fourth is defect clustering. So defects are not distributed evenly through software. A small number of modules or functionalities may contain a large number of defects, while the majority of components may have few or none to be found. Therefore, testing efforts really should be focused on these high risk areas and scenarios, as well as, of course, your critical functionality. This will provide much greater confidence in your system. Fifth is the pesticide paradox. So repeated testing of the same set of test cases may not be effective in identifying new defects. Therefore, testing should be periodically reviewed and updated with new test cases and scenarios. There's a reason why you might have a regression test pack which you need to keep looking at and updating and that's because if you're changing functionality and you're not finding any bugs there could be a problem with the actual scope of your testing so an example of this is you could have a test suite that is passing every time however with review without reviewing the tests and updating the suite you may run into this problem your system can change and grow so should your testing sixth is testing is context dependent so testing should be tailored to the specific context this includes the software requirements development methodology and of course the user needs just think that with testing mission critical software is going to need a completely different mindset to test in a website that might sell clothes. You need to think about the end users and how you, your testing can impact the success of your project. And then last but not least, you've got the absence of errors is a fallacy. So the absence of defects does not guarantee the quality of software. Testing can only identify the presence of defects, not that there are none. We kind of touched on this with the exhaustive testing point. Even though we can think we have fully tested a system and we think there are no issues, this is a fallacy. We cannot say a system is bug free. All we can say is our testing has not identified any issues. To end, 
once you understand these core concepts, you'll start to think with a bit of more of a quality assurance mindset. Please remember that testing is a continuous process. Testing should be an ongoing process throughout the software development lifecycle. That includes development, deployment, and maintenance. And you should start it as early as you can. If you found this presentation useful, please hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment below if you want more videos like this. And as always, thank you for watching.